the old friend. There it is. The sound from the scratching record. There it fades out. No, now it's back again. It fades out slowly into the distance. Now it's back again louder. Ah, oh, finally it's fading out. We'll say goodbye to the old record. As Oh, now it's back again. And we'll say goodbye. Finally, there it goes. Into the distance. The sound of the old Victroli. Oh, now it's back again. Oh, no. This could go on all night. So we shan't allow it to go on all night. My name is Sir Ian McKellen. Please stay tuned for the best show on WFMU here on WFMU East Orange, WXHD, Mount Hope Worldwide, on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. W F M U The Best Show W F M U The Best Show W F M U The Best Show W F M U I mean this is ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one hour television spectacular. p.m. on Tuesday, that means it's time for the best show on WFMU. 180 minutes worth of mirth, music, and mayhem, hosted by the one and only Tom Sharpling. The best show on WFMU broadcasts each and every Tuesday night from the 24th floor of the WFMU broadcast building, overlooking beautiful downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. As always, the phone number is 201-200-WFMU. So call now. But please, refrain from dialing unless you've got something to say. My name is Ali Faranaki, and as always, thanks for listening. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Like the pizza box says, you tried the rest, now try the best. Take it away, Tommy! The show's going to start in a few minutes, but let's listen to some records. Check this next one out. It's a personal favorite of mine.
something good. But part of it's really good. You're gonna need a bigger room. And when you're in a bigger room, you might not know what to do. You might have to think of how you got started sitting in your little room. La -da -da -da. on the run who likes to smoke enjoys a joke and wouldn't get a bit upset if he were really broke with wealth and fame he's still the same i'll bet you find your night life if you don't know his name <laughs> Pretty tough to think about. Pretty 
sound to think about. And then you look me over We're laying down again On a blanket in the clover Same boy you've always known Well I guess I haven't grown Think of what the past did, it could have lasted. So put it in your basket. Look at what the song man, who can lend you a hand? Lower in my casket. This is just a day As soon as you'll be your company The company is a blue ocean water Can I stop my heart and mind from burning? Hey. Everyone who's in the know says That's exactly how it goes Anything good about me I'm the only one who knows They speak to the hard working people the lonely earth Raise your glass to the good and the evil Let's sing to the salt of the earth Lay a prayer for the common foot soldier Spare a heart for his back-breaking work Say a prayer for his wife and his children Burn the fires and we still kill the earth. When I search a faceless crowd, a swirling mass of green and black and white, they don't look real to me. to me or don't they look
no. That's right. That's my new catchphrase for the show. Aw, oh, no. How do you like it? Hey, everybody. This is the best show on WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling. I'm here with you until 11 p.m. tonight. The best show on WFMU. Brought to you each and every Tuesday night here in uh, beautiful downtown Jersey City. My uh, my my uh, co-executive uh, producer, one of the uh, 11 on the team. We call him the Dirty Dozen Minus One. Dave is on the other side of the glass. And my name is Tom. The phone number, 201-200-9368. That's 201-200-WFMU. It is, as you know, as it is every Tuesday night, Open Phone Tuesday. Isn't that exciting? It's Open Phone Tuesday. So that means if you call, you get on the air. You call E, you get E on E. Or you can email me at thomas at wfmu.org. That's the email address. So if you email E, you, you get E on E, the computer. So, uh, hey, we heard the Rolling Stones from their album Beggar's Banquet, Salt of the Earth. And before that, we heard a mini concert from the White Stripes. Now, I know a lot of people say you've been playing the White Stripes too much. That was a bailout because we had a little uh, lockout here at the station. I was locked out of the WFMU record library, which, as everybody knows, is the what? Fill it in the 201 200 9368. Can you fill in the blank? WFMU Record Library is the. Two oh one two hundred WFMU. Fill in the blank. Okay, it's the largest classic rock and roll library on earth. So I was locked out. So we we went and we put on the uh, this White Stripes concert album, and we heard Little Room and Union Forever. And the same boy you've always known. And starting us off. The Dog Face Hermans from their 7-inch on the Project A-Bomb label. Too much for the red ticker. So tonight is an exciting night here on the show. Because we will be joined within 15 minutes, hopefully, by the one and only Michael Jackson and his band Punk. I guess it Mike Jackal is the name he's going under. Mike Jackal and his band Punk will be live in the studio within, I would hope, 15 minutes. They have not arrived yet which is a very punk thing to do, to not show up in a timely fashion. But they will be arriving shortly, and we can look forward to that. They will be playing a concert and doing an interview. This is one of the first, if not the first, radio uh, interview slash performance from this band which is uh it's michael jackson apparently he was bit by the punk bug and is now in a punk band called punk and he will be performing last week we had a uh, very exciting phone conversation with his uh agent i believe uh 
I believe his name was Barry Levitt, called up and uh, hooked us up nicely, I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. Hey, Dave? Yeah? Has, has the band shown up yet? Not yet. No. Not yet? I just got a call from them, though. You did? No. You didn't. I didn't, I didn't think so. Back. No. Okay. Not yet. Soon. 201-200-9368 is the phone number. Open phone Tuesday in full effect. And on our newsbreaker uh, line, it's actually not a line. It's and it's not that newsworthy either. It's uh, you know those uh, the thing. Remember it, it, the thing where what is it? And everybody wanted to know what it was. What was it? And then it came out that it. It's something called the Segway. S E G W A Y. It's a human transporter. And basically it's a uh It's kind of like driving around on gym equipment, I think. Kind of what it looks like. It's like if you put two wheels on some sort of Nordic track. And except it's 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 got like gyroscopes so that you don't fall off of it. And I was watching on the Tonight Show a, a few months ago. I guess a, back in December, when Russell Crowe was uh, he was on promoting a beautiful mind, and uh, then they also had the uh, the guy who invented it, the Segway, Dean Kamen, was on. And he brought a few of them out. So it was actually brought two out. It was, uh, and then Jay Leno got on one. And Russell Crowe got on the other one. I think they actually had three because then this guy got on the third one. So they had three of these things. It. Segway. There, the Segway. Human transporter. So he got on it. Jay Leno got on it. Russell Crowe got on it. And they were driving around the set. And then Jay Leno started doing this, like, weird sparring thing with, uh, like, they were dueling. Like, they were jousting. Which, uh, and I guess they were making references to, to, uh, Gladiator. Which I don't know if, was there actually joust? There was no jousting in Gladiator. So they were making references, like, and Russell Crowe would drive at Jay Leno on the It and they were going like head to head, and the guy, Dean Kamen, was kind of like trying to tell Russell Crowe how to drive it. He's like, just hold on to the thing here and do the. And then Russell Crowe at some point was like, uh, I think I figured it out. You don't need to. Like, he, he basically told him to go, uh, you know. Take, take a big leap in Lake F, if you know what I mean. Does that make sense? But now, Segway HT, Human Transporter, available to you, the consumer. The first ever consumer models are being auctioned off at Amazon.com right now. There are three of them being sold. One of them is currently at, with 102 bids, at $40,000. Another one is at $36,100. And the final one is at $37,100. I want, who's bidding on the Segways? Let's see. 
I want to see this, the high bidder. Mimu. And they started it at a dollar, which is like literally the most arrogant thing you can do with an auction if you're selling something online that you know is worth a lot of money. We're just going to start it at a, a dollar. Maybe it'll sell for three dollars when it's all done. Oh, wait, no. The bids go in increments of ten thousand dollars. What happened to the phones tonight? Come on. How dare all of you. It's Open Phone Tuesday. That's a privilege, not a right. Hey, Dave? Any sign from the uh, the band yet? Not yet. No, not yet. We're waiting for the band Punk to arrive. Yeah, there's lots of traffic on uh -huh. the... Uh, you think they're stuck in traffic? Yeah. No? You don't? I don't know. You don't know. Were they, were they flying in or are they taking the van? I think they were driving the van. Okay. Any si how's the phone uh, room going out there? Uh, it's not. I'm sorry. A little quiet tonight, right? A little little light. Light on the uh, action out there. Well, you know, your your audience does cross over with the female figure skater fan audience. Uh, you think so? You think we're getting yeah. some, uh, it will be, it's some be overlap? It's a showdown between the American figure skater girls. So. Between Michelle Kwan and... Sasha Cohen. You know who I'm rooting for? Who? Sasha Cohen. You know why? Why? Because I'm a commie. Now what is her? Is she is she she is from Russia. No, she's from. Uh, I think she's from the Valley. What? Where is that? Is, uh, is that like on the Pacific Rim? No. Oh, so it's two Americans competing against them. Yeah, yeah. What have? Why are two Americans against each other in the Olympics? Um, apparently, I don't know why I know this. Um, uh, during one of their warm up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Months ago, Sasha Cohen bumped Michelle Kwan. Okay. So. Really? Who are you rooting for? Um, Michelle Kwan. Michelle Kwan. I know why you're rooting I, I for her. I don't like the attitude. I, from Michelle Kwan? Yeah. You don't like her attitude? No, no, I don't like the attitude from Sasha Cohen. Uh-huh. But I know why you're rooting for Michelle Kwan. Why? Because she was on the cover of Newsweek. Okay. Right? I, I, I don't read. You don't read? No. I think it also might be because you want to, uh, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know me. I, yes, I do. <laughs> the physically stunted girls really do it for me. They do it for you. Well, that's between you and you. Okay. Yeah, and, and the three people who are listening and not calling. You know, we're not going to beg for their calls. How? Uh, okay. We're going to go back to the music. <laughs> Let me just move my. It's loud. We're in a different studio tonight. It's louder in here. You hear everything. Listen. So while we wait for the band Punk to show up, and and as we wait for, uh, hear how loud it is? I can hear Dave all the way at the other end of the room. Thankfully, that doesn't come out over the air. My uh, turning this microphone. Does that go out over the air? Nope. Okay, good. Because in Studio A, you'd hear, well, like when I moved the mic stand around, you'd hear that over the air. But now, 
This one's pretty quiet. Yeah, everything's going really well, Tom. WFMU, you're on the air. Hmm. WFMU, you're on the air. Oh, don't do this to me. WFMU, you're on the air. Oh, Tommy, don't need that. Tonight's show is going to be on a learning curve because we're in a different studio. WFMU, you're on the air. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play some music. Go get my handbook that tells me how to put calls on the air. Oh, let me try this. Hold on. WFMU, you're on the air. It worked, Tom. There it is. I guess I'm the first caller to get the show, show rolling. Yes, you are. Yeah. All right, so about last week with uh, Danny calling up, I'd Who? like to... Uh, I'd like to say I'm sorry. That guy was goofing on. He goofed on you. You know what happened? He told me for it. He was drunk. To tell you the truth. He was he, drunk. He said him and his friend were drinking rum before they called in. So, uh -huh. so I guess that might explain it. Because he normally doesn't. He normally acts dumb, but not dumb like that. So. Uh huh. So yeah. You know, somebody emailed me. You know what they told me? What they tell you? Never let the Hasu kid or the anti Hasu kid on the air ever again. Who were they? Uh, yeah. I bet they never call up the show. His name was Tim. Tim. I'm going to read you what he said. Tim. I spit on you, Tim. He said, uh, during, he answered the survey that we send out for people who want the, uh, the cards, right? You got your card. Oh, definitely. What I don't like about the best show on WFMU is, and he filled in the Hasu Kids slash anti Hasu Kid. Enough is enough. What is what does this kid think he's like better than us? So you know what I have to say to you tonight? Enough is enough. No moss. I, I don't like this Tim character. Well, he can call and square off with you. I would. You know what? He thinks he's so so much better than us. You know? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he just call in? I don't, I don't see him. Well, you, know. you just threw down the gauntlet, my friend. F fighting our own battle. Like exactly. Can't stay out of it. Well, thank you. No problem, Tom. I will talk to you later. All right. Okay. Bye. Right. He's not happy. The WFMU, you're on the air. FMU, you're on the air. It isn't working. Are you on the air? Do you hear me? Oh, it's all falling apart. WFMU, you're on the air. No, you're not. WFMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, how you doing? Not too bad. It's Chris in Toronto. How you doing, Chris? Not too bad. How are you? I just asked you that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the it thing, the Segway thing. Are you going to buy one of them? No, I'm not going to buy one. Why not? Well, not until they become, you know, I can barely repair my car right now. Um, this this whole thing, like, there's like 37 days or something like that on the auction. Left, mm -hmm. Yes. And it's almost at 40 grand now. Like, yes. either people are really interested in mm -hmm. alternative modes of transportation or they're just being, like, smug about it and saying, well, I'm going to be the first one on the block with it, you know, and drive around like an idiot, you know, when, I mean, they, could, when they could be walking, yeah. anyway. When you see the first person on one of these things, what are you going to think? 
Wouldn't you just feel so stupid to be the first person to, like, roll one of these out of your apartment, yeah. like, down the steps, open the door? And you know who it's going to be, too. The Who's guy, that? I mean, the man, the woman, whatever, the family that gets it is going to be just, you know, the dorkiest sort of rich guy on the block. Exactly. You know, exactly. Most people won't like him to begin with, but this will just put like the, put it over the top. It'll be like somebody who's, they're just saying, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Would you for me? Now, I know you're in Toronto. Yeah. And the, the Canadian economy couldn't be stronger. Oh, yeah. Right? What do you call the, what, do you, what kind of money do you have up there? What kind of money? Yeah, what what is your dollar up there? What is it? It's it's a coin. It's called the, a loony. The loony. Yeah. No, really, what is it called? It's called the loony. Instead of dollar stores, we have like loony stores. You know. Loony stores. Yeah, we call them loons for short. Uh huh. And do you ever feel like getting paid in loonies? Does that ever make you just feel like not like it's not real? Well, come on. I mean, you know, sure, getting paid in loonies. Who gets paid in loonies? You know, it's like getting paid in bucks. You know. Well, what do you? So what? What's the official term? Teach me. For it's well, it's loony. It's it's got a loon on it. There, the official term is a one dollar coin, I, I imagine. But everyone says loony. I mean, not it's not it's not by any means like a slang word. Uh huh. You know, the studio is pretty loud tonight, Tom. Isn't it? Can you hear Dave over the over your computer? No, I can't. But I, I had to turn down. I was checking all my volumes because I have it going through a few computers. The final one actually emits the sound. Uh huh. I was checking all the preamps and whatnot, and it's I loud. thought it was me because it was overdriving a bit. Mm -hmm. But anyway. But it's me. It's. Well, I guess it is. You might have to get uh, what's his name, voiceover legend, uh, Boardman, back in the house, do a little uh, rig up. Kendrick Martin. Kendrick Martin's man, Tony. We're trying to get him back on. Kendrick oh, I Martin. I really hope so. He never did come on to promote his book. No, I know. I'm, you know, which reminds me, I was going to ask you, uh, does this constitute a fought event? Uh, last Saturday night, my friend Gord, Gord Canada, and I sat up. Oh, I don't know. It must have been four or five hours. Uh huh. Sitting around, you know, a little bit of sody. With a smoky, smoky. Uh huh. Listening to FMU archives, just just cutting and just like, you know, sampling uh, at best show archives one after the other. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like four hours, five hours straight. Really? Yeah. And then we, when we couldn't take it anymore, we put one on and went to sleep. <laughs> together? <laughs> no, not together. He just crashed at my place. You know, okay. it was like a long night of. Partying. It was a friend's birthday. Were you drinking Canadian whis Wicked Domestic? Um, what were we drinking? No, I drink German stuff, man. Mm -hmm. We're drinking Becks. Were you listening to the Hives? We were. Why did Gord tell you? You were drinking be beer in a can. Yeah. Becks in a can. Yeah. Did you eat at Little India? Yeah. Okay, you're on to me. Yes, I hope I he am. didn't tell you our discovery. What is the, that? Our, the discovery we made while sleuthing around. On what? On, on, the, uh, on the archives? On, on a certain on a certain caller of yours. Who? What caller? See, I don't want to say it because I, I don't I want him to keep calling and calling and calling forever as uh -huh. long as FMU exists. Now is this one being pulled over on me? No, I'm not trying to pull anything over on you. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. Okay, obviously Gore didn't mention that, so let's see. So I, I you know maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it at all. You have to email me the I secret will. of this. I will. But we shan't let this over the air. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Well, Chris, thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. All right, you have a good night. You too. All right, bye. See you. Bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Tom, I want to thank you for the FOT card. Oh, you're welcome. Now, how did you get the card? Just tell everybody. It's a Friends of Tom membership card. Yes, it is, and it arrived in an official WFMU envelope, apparently hand-lettered by yourself, because it didn't appear to be 
a woman's handwriting, as you've been accused now, of. Now, why would people say that that handwriting looked womanly? Well, no, this wouldn't. It was very, very blocky, angular, so I'm guessing not so much. But it's merely a guess. I'm not an expert in the field of, you know, handwriting or anything like that, so, you know. I mean, I didn't spray perfume on it. No, I was saying that the one I got, as uh -huh. opposed to previous callers. But it's the one everybody gets. Oh, well, then I'd say that your listeners are, let's say, ribbing you. So that person was misguided. I would have to say, yes, in my experience, it looked in no way feminine whatsoever. Thank you. Hey, it's the least I can do. That's right. So you got the card, but you got it. How did you, you emailed Tom S at WFMU.org, and all you said was, I want to be a friend of Tom, right? Yes, and I included my address, so you sent it without the survey even. But yeah. I did send you the survey. Okay. You know, I'm a stand-up guy. I'm a friend I know of you. Tom. Yeah. Yes, you are. There you go. Now, have you used the card at any local restaurants? Uh, not yet so much. Don't get out much. Uh, you know, slimed out of a fire inspection, though. You know, I had out-of-date fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. No problem, friend of Tom. Yes. You know, they gave me a couple weeks. I'm a friend of the firemen. I would assume that you're just about friend to everyone in the free world. Or well, you would be completely mistaken on that. Well, you know, I, I mean, just, hey, you know. <clears throat> hey, do you remember the cop who called in? Uh, a few times. How to get out of uh, yes. speeding tickets? He's on the other line right now. Well, he could be some help to me, as I have 29 points on my New Jersey license. So. 29 points. Thank you. I'm going to ask him how to get out of tw how to how, what advice he has for you. Pretty much, it's a barn door after the fact type scenario. So you'd have to get me someone in DMV and computers. That's, yes. That's, that's well, who I need to be hooked up. With. You know who would be good for you? Who's Did that? you ever see the movie War Games? Unfortunately, back whenever it happened, I think I did. Yeah, with uh, Matthew Broderick. Yes. And, yes. You need to be friends with him. Well, you know, he's... Because you know what he did in the movie? Well, no, but he married Sarah Jessica Parker, so the guy's got something going for him, you know. But in the movie, you know what he did? He hacked into the school computers mm -hmm. and uh, changed Ali Sheedy's grades so she didn't have to go to summer school. Well, you know, I mean, that's uh, that's that's a noble act indeed. And uh, yeah, if you could do something like that for me, I I doubt it, but I I'll give it a shot. Well, sure. we are going to find out. Well, thank you. So I I am giving you the old-fashioned friends of Tom heave ho. Oh, well. I'm sorry to do it to you. Better than being flushed. This You're not going to get flushed. Thanking you. Well, thank you, Stan. Okay, you have right. a good one. You too. Thanks. thanks Tom. Bye. Bye. WFMU, you're on the air. No. Wait. Here we go. Oh, no, I just hung up on the on Officer Tom. You know what that means. WFMU, you're on the air. <laughs> He's going to beat me up now. WFMU, you're on the air. Sorry, Tom. That's all right. I had my phone and the radio on. Is this Officer Tom? Yes, it is. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? I'm okay. Good. Yeah, whenever I hear somebody that has 29 points on their license and, and it's not suspended, it amazes me. That, they, that he's still just out there driving. Yeah, I, I can't. They're supposed to suspend your license after, like, 12 points. Mm -hmm. And I consistently run into people that have, like, 20, 22, 29, 30, and, and they're not suspended. I guess they just have to They keep paying their money to the state. It just makes you sick, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make me sick. Some people just have bad luck. Are you like the office? You know, did you ever see the movie Cobra? Uh, yes, I have. Are you like Marion Cobretti, Officer with, Marion Cobretti? With, that was uh, Stallone's character, yeah. right? Have you ever walked into a grocery store that's being held <laughs> hostage, grabbed a beer off the shelf, 
opened it, drained it, and then shot the uh, the person holding everyone hostage? No. What is no, the, my, what is my the, technique is more like shoot shoot the, the perpetrator mm -hmm. and then yell, stop or I'll shoot. Okay, now you're scaring me. <laughs> but that's how that's not how you operate. What was that? That's not how you operate. Of course not. Now what's the deal with the uh you can tell me though. What's the deal with the uh have you ever heard anything of a cop keeping like a gun in a plastic bag? You mean like a throw down weapon? A throw down, yeah, exactly. I, I don't even know what that reference is. I see it in movies though. When they yeah. go, they go back in the trunk of the the car and they take out like a a gun to throw at the scene. Uh, I think more guys will carry. Well, this is just, uh, of course, my hypothesis and mm. rumor that I have heard. Uh huh. But more like uh, less lethal weapons than a than a than a firearm. Uh huh. Like a knife. Okay. Or stuff like that. But you don't support that. Of course not. That would be wrong. Exactly. So how are things out there now? Good. I just left traffic court. Really? Yeah. I, I, I had a case tonight with a guy. I rode him for 109 miles an hour in a 50-mile-an-hour zone. What, what was he thinking? I really couldn't tell you. And when you, when, you, when you pulled him over, when you got him, did he just say, like, did he say, did he just look at you like, duh, or was he just like, is he, was he just like, this is completely, I understand, this is completely indefensible. Exactly. He had nothing that he could possibly say at that point. So was it, uh, when you wrote him, did he just say, give me my ticket and I'll, I will not waste a second more of your time? Was that what it was like? Um, yeah, but, you know, we had to investigate it a little bit more, you know, maybe search the vehicle a little bit. Uh, you know, I had the other officers come up, and we were all stood around and laughed at the uh, 109 readout on the radar mm -hmm. unit, and we just, like, chuckled behind his back. Yeah. Is that the fastest one you ever have seen, that per was literally, personally? That, that ticket was written December 31st, which was obviously the last day of last year. Okay. And it was the highest speed that we had that year. That was uh, For that the was year 2001. Course. Exactly. Is it the fastest one you've ever ridden up? It is. It is the fastest I've ever ridden. Have you ever pulled anyone over for going too slow? Absolutely. They annoy me more than the people that go too fast. Now, the people who go, you know what, when they go too slow, is it because they're drunk? Sometimes. And they're trying to just be very deliberate about their actions? Sometimes. But other usually, people, is it incompetence? Usually, yes, I was just going to say, it's usually because they're extremely stupid. Uh-huh. And they're just bad drivers. Yes, they don't deserve to have a license. You know what I say about bad drivers? What? I think you should, when you see a bad driver, you should pull out. Do you have a machine gun in your squad car? No? Uh, that is, yes, I do. You do? Yes. You should just fire your machine gun at their car. Did you see um, and say uh, Black that, Hawk Down? Not yet. Okay. But have you ever seen a movie where they have, like, these cork helicopters with the machine guns on the side? Mounted on them? Yes. Yeah. They, they spin at, like, 70,000 RPM, uh -huh. firing, like, yeah. huge quantities. That's what you want. That's If I'm going to go with superior firepower, that's what I want. I want to be able to just cut the vehicle into, it looked like a, when you take a piece of paper and put it in a cross-cut paper shredder. Mm-hmm. That's what I want the vehicle to look like when I'm done with it. Is that the kind of thing you dream about? <laughs> Just like a totally souped-up squad car? You know, I enjoy my job most times, but I don't think I take it that far. Have you ever, like, drawn in traffic <laughs> court on, like, on a pad, like a picture of you in, like, a super-powered squad car? Like shooting, <laughs> like, you know, like shooting down, like, a plane or something? Or, like, flying? No, I haven't, actually. But that is very, very funny. What would you doodle when you're in, when you're in traffic, or what do you doodle? Oh, what do I doodle? Actually, I don't. I usually, I'm usually checking out some of the uh, attractive women, and I say to myself, I'm wondering what officer wrote this woman a ticket. 
because they're crazy. Well, of course. You don't write a hot chick a ticket. Right. Right. But you know what? You'd be surprised that the hot chicks are the ones that always give you the most attitude out on the road. And then when they, they prance into court, they have a totally different demeanor. Mm -hmm. because, they've, because they've thought about it. And they, they know that they didn't, you know, whatever their reasons were. But they're looking to get over, just like most people. So. Now, what is the weirdest thing you've ever been offered to get out, to let someone slide on a ticket? <laughs> what is the actual weirdest thing? Wow, that's a good question. Um, Have you ever been offered food? Food? Yes. Uh, like free, no. me free meals at a restaurant? Uh, yes, actually I have. To get out of a ticket? Of course. Well, you know what? It doesn't, it's, it's, this is the new age. It's not as blatant as it used to be. Mm -hmm. It's usually a lot more subversive and around, uh, you know, and, and covert. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever handed you their license? Insurance and registration and had money wrapped in the middle of it. <laughs> I just had that last week. So I mean, how, what was it that they put in it? A 50? I, it, no, it must have been a mistake because it was only 10. That's an insult. Of course. You're not on the take, but that's an insult to think it, you could be had for $10. Right. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with the $10? Right. You know, oh, well, you know, you're, you, you throw your complete, your, your honor away, your dignity. I'd be for, selling myself short. Exactly. If you're going to go for it, you got to swing for the fences. Exactly. You got to say, "Hand me the wallet." No, uh, I want the I want the duffel bag with the hundreds. Exactly. The there we go. Now, what 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 would be the weirdest thing though that you have uh, have been offered to get out of a ticket? Sex. Now, was the what was it? It was a woman who offered you sex. Yes, I haven't had a male offer me sex at this point yet. Now, not, I, that, I, not that I'm looking for that. Uh -huh. But if it was the woman was the woman a total knockout? Nah, she was like a drunk pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your candor is is very candid. I'm being I'm being completely candid with you. You are. You know what? You're not saying anything. You're you're just telling it like it is. You didn't, and you obviously declined. The offer. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. At that, that time, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that See, I'm, time. Off du I'm off duty now, so it's a little, uh, I, I could be a little bit more candid with uh -huh. you. Because my persona is slightly different when I'm working. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it is. Even when I'm on the radio. Now, uh, so you've been offered sex just once? No, it is, that happens on occasion, you know. It never happens when I'm looking for it, though. When you're looking, exactly. <laughs> What other things have you been off? What if somebody said to you, look, if you let me off, I've got so much cocaine in the trunk of my car right now, I will hook you up big time. Wow. What would you, would you think that that person was the dumbest person you had ever pulled over? At that point, it would either be that or it is the dumbest person trying to set me up I have ever met. Or if someone said to you, look, I've got some uh, Tech Nines in my trunk. They're illegal. You can have your pick. Wow. That's a good one. See, now you know what a Tech Nine is? Do I know what one is? Yes. Well, being that I have three of them in my <laughs> trunk right now. Hey, wait, who, who am I telling this to? Oh, no, I have no way. You know where I learned Tech Nine? Where? From a rap record. Oh, okay. So That's I'll, what I, I, I would, I could, see, that all makes sense. Yeah. Most people, most people that carry uh, large quantities of illegal weapons in their vehicles, don't tell you. Exactly. When when you've had to do a search uh, on a car, what is the strangest thing you found? Oh, geez, you know it's very funny that you should say that, because I had these uh, this this boyfriend girlfriend making out, and it wound up that there was some other stuff that went on where I had to search the vehicle, uh -huh. and and I found this bag of sex toys. Can I and you know, they were the the sex toys that a female would use. Really, you found a bag of them. Right in the, the vehicle. Did, did you like spread them across the hood and just make a show of it? <laughs> That's or, what we do. You and made I a asked, show of it. Of course. And I asked first. Mm -hmm. I said, "Whose are these?" And she said that they were hers. Uh huh. And I was like, "Well, I appreciate your honesty, you know." And mm -hmm. she was young, like maybe like nineteen. 20, and I was like, wow, you, you got a lucky boyfriend here. I guess he's going to, you know. You said that to her. Uh, or you, or you, thought that, you thought that. You know, I 
I can't recollect because there are times where I may say something like that to uh -huh. somebody, and then there are times where I may not. But uh, I found it very interesting. So that would that would constitute the weirdest thing you've ever found in a search on a vehicle? No, I'm sure there have been much more weirder things than that, but I, I really can't recollect them at, at this very moment. Have you? Now, this might be an odd question. Have you ever had to search like an like like a, a hoagie or a sub sandwich for <laughs> for a weapon, like in a car? Like what no. is the, what what is the strangest thing you had to tear apart <laughs> in a search? Wow, another good question. Uh, you know, a lot of times you mean like something besides the vehicle itself, like the seats or exactly. anything like that. Uh, you know, you get the occasional. Uh, suitcase or backpack or stuff like that actually i think at one time there was uh there was a chicken a dead you know a cooked chicken in the car in the car like and you one had... of those one of those pre-roasted chickens that you buy at the supermarket and you had to tear that apart and i looked in it you looked in it did you eat yeah. it you ate the chicken though didn't you i, I grabbed the drum thumbstick yes and i did you did and yeah. you ate it right in front of the guy and then I threw the bone at his face. And the guy was really fat and got really hungry. He couldn't say nothing to it. me. He couldn't say nothing to me about it. Mm -hmm. I said, "I'm taking. I'm eating this." I wouldn't even say anything. Just my actions were speaking louder than any words at that given moment. They were speaking volumes. Yeah. Now I have one more question for you. Then I have to uh, let you go because it's okay. the top of the hour. I've heard a rumor that that uh, the police in New Jersey are arresting people for seeing the movie Super Troopers. Is that true? <laughs> You know, I actually want to see that movie. Now, if you're offended by the movie, will you arrest people in the theater laughing? <laughs> I think at this point you would realize that it would take a lot more for me to arrest them and what be if, offended. What if you're in the theater and sitting behind you with some guy going, Man, I can't wait to see this movie because I hate cops. <laughs> I want to laugh at these stupid cops because I can't stand cops. What would you do then? Uh, I would probably say to myself, you know, this is the kind of person that I don't like, but, you know, I don't, I don't judge him on being a stupid redneck, or at least that's the impression that you were giving me by your, uh, voice Imp character. My, my impression, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't judge him by that. You know, if he wants to, you know, every movie I go to, you know, I try not to jump to those conclusions. Well, officer, but, you are, you are a, uh, you are one of the greatest callers to this program. All right. And I'm looking forward to coming down to the studio. I can't day. wait. We're going to have to. We'll figure something out after the marathon. You got it. And we'll it. have you down. Take it easy, Tom. Oh, thanks a lot. All Good right. Night. Good night. Bye. Hey, this is WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. We'll get one more call in here, then we will get back to the music. WFMU, you're on the air. Oh, hello, Tom. It's Gord from Canada. Hey, Gord. How are you? Not so bad. How about you? I'm okay. Good. Hey, did you see the movie? Did you see the movie uh, Freddie Got Fingered? No, I did not. Do you Tom know? Green? Do you know what Tom Green's name was in the movie? No. Gord. Really? Yeah. That's a popular name, you know. Is it popular up there? Yeah, you got Norm, Doug, uh, Ian. Is Ian's kind of fallen out of favor, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's. I would say that that's still on the. Now is the name the top fifteen Canadian name? Is the name Gordon popular up there? Well, it, it's a short form of Gordon. What is Gord? It is. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it can't it's be. It's so funny. I, I, that doesn't I make in Providence sense. for a little while. Okay. And, and, and I like how you. I like how you completely out. ignored my uh, stupidity. But let's move on. Sorry, I'm like a steam. No. I'm just anxious for punk. You're a Canadian, Steve. I know. Hey, Dave. I want to hear punk play. Are right? punk here yet? No. No. If if you don't mind, I, I've got a request for punk. I mean, they can take it or leave it, but I, okay. I, I'd love them to do their version of Sickles and Hammers. I'm going to ask That's them. That's cool. I will ask them when right. they show up. Anyway, Tom, you never answered our question about whether or not our uh, little night of uh, insanity constitutes an official thought gathering or not. No, it doesn't. Okay. Because it, it was not sanctioned ahead of time. You. Well, that's what I figured. But. but I appreciate you guys having fun like that. We're, uh, as they say in, J in Japan, otaku. You otaku. I mean? 
Yeah, it means an enthusiast. So you have, so it's you, you are Gord. Yeah. And then we have Chris. Yep. And who else in the Canadian, in the, uh, Canadian the Canadian Mafia? Well, unfortunately for actual fought members. Uh-huh. I think that's probably about no, it. No, that's now. not. But we can we can hook up with. I get I get email from people in Canada more than the two of you guys. But are they card carrying? Fun? Yes, they are. Well, hook them up with us. I'll hook them up because I'm going to have a I'm going to have a funding drive challenge for you, and that'll be that uh, if you can get five Canadian fots to pledge, uh -huh. I will switch my pledge from an amount in Canadian dollars, which I'll divulge at funding drive time, okay, to an amount in actual US greenbacks. So you will not pledge in loonies. I will not pledge in loonies. Because you know we can't use them here. Whenever people send loonies, you know what we do? We dump them right into the Hudson. <laughs> There's nothing we can do with them. Well it's about all a loonies worth, I guess. Anyway, um last thing. Yeah. Uh, for for it pioneer. Uh huh. I'm thinking the natural is is that hot rockin' rap scallion Fuqua who's uh Still, I believe, using his rascal as, as his main car. Well, I think uh, the Gorch was actually driving a rascal. Apparently, we're going to have to see if Hot Rock and Ronnie ever calls back in, which I don't think he ever will. It's, well, but uh, we, can, we can all... Supposedly, the, wood. the Gorch was heading from Montana to New Jersey to beat me up on a rascal. So I have no idea he, if he's on his way or if he made it or... If he's still very far away, I don't know. I want to see the Gorch do a rascal jump, kind like, of like Fonzie. Like Fonzie. Jump. Wouldn't that be exciting? It certainly would. To see the Gorch do a jump on his rascal. What could he jump over? A soup can, maybe? <laughs> maybe some uh, Maybe some of uh, Fuqua's air check tapes. Then hopefully he would fall short then and crush the air check tapes exactly. into dust. Wouldn't that be five minutes of complete and utter agony? What's listening that? To, listening to one of Fuqua's air checks. I like how you just call him Fuqua, too. I like that. Well, I love it. Is, no, it, is it F U Q U O I S? I think it's F U Q U A. Oh, kind of like Foucault. Is that how you say that in Canada? Well, that's, I guess, literary critic Michel Foucault. But, and, you know, I don't want to. Now, as a Canadian here. citizen. Yes. Are you mad at the Russian skaters? You're mad at them, right? No. That hurt your feelings, right? No, I wasn't too worried about that. As a Canadian, are you proud of Steve Nash for being the first Canadian to play in the NBA All-Star game? Sure, I guess. Unfortunately, although we did invent basketball, I'm, I'm not too, uh, too hip on it. Mm -hmm. Not really up on... Uh... Dr. James Naismith invented right. it in Toronto. That's correct. And uh, we actually have it like a Canadian history moment. They're these little 60-second spots that they show on TV, and they're like, uh, you know, historical recreations of famous Canadian stuff. The f and apparently in the Naismith one, mm -hmm. originally when they were playing basketball, no holes in the baskets. And the custodian would have to get the up ball. on a ladder yes, and pull the ball down. And did you know that after each basket, they would do a jump ball? For real? Yeah, for real. Sorry, I'm trying to use an Americanism. For, for real. Re for real is an American. What would be a Canadianism that I could say here that will be cool? Um, that and, I'll be the first one to say. Well, you know, I don't know if you saw that Simpsons episode, which was basically missed the mark. The one this past week yeah. where they went to Canada? Mm -hmm. I thought that episode was really bad. Yeah, that, that Getty Lee... Using the Getty Lee uh, take off to the Great White North song, uh -huh. Bob and Doug album, it was kind of tired. It is. It was a very, it was a very thin, uninspired episode. Well, and the irony is that the two writers were Canucks as well. And who were they? I uh, don't know the names. I'm sorry. See, getting out of my depth. Oh, but but how sorry. do you know There's that Canadian word? How do you know that they're Canucks? I read about it in uh, TV Guide. One now, is there a Canadian TV? Is there a Canadian, there. Canadian TV Guide? There is. There's a Canadian run of TV Guide. We've actually got split run magazines, which are, you know, like Time Canada. Or... Now, who is a Canadian star that I would know nothing about who is just the biggest thing up there? Rene Simard. Rene? Simard. 
Seymard. I M A R D. And what what does Rene Seymard do? He was like the Donny Osmond of Quebec in mm -hmm. the seventies. Was he good? Uh, he was popular. Let's just say that. Now, how about a guy like Kim Mitchell? Kim's okay. Because I've heard that the song uh, you guys are changing the anthem from O Canada to Go for a Soda. Is that true? No. If it were called Go for Pop. Pop. Yeah. Do you know, we don't really have soda. Up here. Do you know that song? Pop. Might as well go for a soda. Oh, of course I know that one. That was a huge hit, right? Yep. How about Brian Adams? You don't like him, right? Stinker. Glass Tiger? No. How about the Young Canadians? Do you remember them? Very early 80s hardcore act? No. Fabulous band. How about uh, Triumph? Wicked. Triumph aren't as good as April Wine, though. I don't know if you're very familiar with them. Who was the greatest Canadian rocker ever? Neil Young? The greatest rocker? No, Randy Bachman. For He's, sure. Randy Bachman is the greatest Canadian rocker ever. I think so. Okay. In my earnest opinion. Now was the band? You know, I, don't, uh -huh. I don't want to hold punk up here. So. Okay. Well, let's. I'm going to. Gonna, I'm going to move on. Let me ask you. Were, was the band Saga from Canada? Oh, they absolutely were. Didn't they sound like they were from Europe, though? No. To well, to my American ears, they sounded like they were from Canada. Really? No offense. That's all right. None it's came. something that we can see about you. Yeah. I'm huh? sure there's things that you see about us that we don't see, but to us, Saga couldn't have been more Canadian. All right. Well, I, I'm actually only about 15 minutes from the border. I could ride my bike. You might as well be border. all the way. You might as well be up touching um, the the thing up there. What is it called above you guys? The North Pole? Yes, that. I see. That's right. Well, I guess so. well, Gord, I appreciate you calling. Oh, no worries. And no worries. Is that is that like the is that like the uh... that one's okay? No worries. That's more Australian. But I, uh -huh. I think if you want your number one Canadian phrase, two uh -huh. words, I'm sorry. Do I have to say it with that lilt and the O there? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. A few different intonations. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you get fifty Canadians out of the pool, Tom? How? Everybody out of the pool. What do you say afterwards? What? Tom, two words. What do you say? I'm sorry. You got it. But I, I completely, you completely confused me with that joke. Sorry. See, now you didn't have to apologize. Well, it does explain, is it because Canadians are polite? They are profuse apologizers. Okay. Yes. What do you guys have to apologize for? Young Street? <laughs> well, we certainly don't need to apologize for... Uh, no, I won't even say it. I won't say it. What's that? Don't say it. You're better off not saying it. I think you know. I don't know. But don't okay. say it. All right. Well, well, Gord, thank you so much for calling. All right. And giving us an insight into the mind of a Canadian. Okay, take her easy. All right. Take, I... take her easy. Sorry. Okay, bye. Bye. Sorry. Hey, who wants to hear some music from uh, the band Speed Glue and Schnicky Sh from Japan? Let's listen to this by them. Yeah. 
things in this world. Yeah. Don't you realize the day you were born, he gave you your life and he gave you a beautiful home.
set here you are listening to the best show on wfmu my name is tom sharpling here until 11 tonight on wfmu we just heard from the hives from their barely legal album we heard aka idiot And before that, Cornelius, from his uh, album Point on the uh, Matador label, we heard Braz- his cover of the the song Brazil. And he also uh, he puts his his website address right on the cover of his CD, which I uh, I will not tell you what it is because of. His hubris to put that on the cover. He gets no promotion from it. Sorry, Cornelius. And from the Love, Peace, and Poetry collection of Japanese psychedelic music, we heard Speed, Glue, and Shinky. You know, my, my favorite is uh, Glue in that. I like Glue. Then Shinky. Then Speed. Run and Hide, the name of this song, on the normal slash QDK record label out of Bonn, Germany. The phone number, 201-200-9368. That's 201-200-WFMU. We are awaiting the band Punk, who are an hour and a half late. Hey, Dave? Yeah? Any any word from the band? No word from Punk yet. Okay. I would like it. Can you uh, try to get a hold of their, their uh, the guy Barry Levitz from last week? I think there's a phone number on the... Uh... On the fridge? No, not on the fridge. We don't have... I don't bring a fridge with me every week. On the computer. Okay, please look in. We got to get a got to track it. Track this down. WFMU, you're on the air. Good evening, Tom. Good evening to you. I got a question for you. What, what do you think the deal is with this Jason Williams thing? It's strange. What do I think of the Jason Williams uh, yeah, thing like, with him? Uh, it's, it's such a. Don't you think it's kind of a. It's very strange. Mm-hmm. Do I think it's very strange? Yeah. Like, what's your take on it? What's my take on the Jason Williams thing? Yeah. I think that you are involved in it. You do? Well, you're wrong. No, I, I honestly don't know right now. So weird, like yeah. I mean, I hope he didn't do it because he seems mm-hmm. like a nice enough guy. It seems like it seems like at least they're saying that it's like a weird accident, right? Right. But yet he didn't say anything, which I think if if he did do it, I think he should have fessed up to it, only because just to protect himself to show that he what you know it was an accident. Uh huh. But uh, he may have also been covering for someone else. Someone else may have been playing around with that thing. Hmm. But it's such a—it's just so strange the way it's, it's all unfolding. You think so? Yeah, and I, I hope he didn't do it because like, he seems nice. Seems like a nice enough guy. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. I—I've always liked him. Yeah, I don't think he doesn't impress me. You know, the kind of guy who would do something so like that. But I, I was just curious what your take is on it. Well, I know he also he he uh, 
when he was on the 76ers back at the beginning of his career, mm-hmm. he was like a, a little bit of a, a rougher, out-of-control guy. Yeah, St. John's, too. He was like yeah. kind of a thug. But then he changed his life around. and I, I think he may have done it, but it may have been a total mistake. Mm-hmm. But I, I, he also was uh, arrested for shooting off a gun in the parking lot of the uh, what is now the Continental Airlines Arena. Oh, really? Back uh, when he was playing. So. I heard he likes, also like he'll have a couple beers and go skeet shooting. He has a, he has, he likes his guns, so maybe it was an accident with guns or something, but you think maybe it's already friends. so horrible, I don't... Yeah, it is. It's just unpleasant. Yeah, maybe his friends were, like, trying to help him out or something. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know what, though? What's that? We will find out. Yeah, we will. You know how? Um, well, the police are working on it in the news. That's right. You know, and uh, I guess once you know more, you're going to comment on it, maybe. I will weigh in. Okay. When I know more. You want, you want to wait till the facts come in. Exactly. Uh, that's, uh, that's fair. Well, thank you. Okay. Well, young man, I want to say good night to you. You have a pleasant evening. Well, thanks now. for calling. Sounds like you have a bit of a cold there. Yeah, I'm a little sick. You're a little run down. Yeah, I'm not doing too well. What are you taking for that cold? I, uh, on, on something called Augmentum. Augmentum. Yeah, which is a really strong... Antibiotic? Yeah, oh, uh, that's, uh, that's awful. Knocking you for a loop? Yeah, it's also giving me the trots. Okay, well, trot away, my friend. Okay. Trot far away from me. Have a good night. Oh, you you too. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Dave. Yeah. This is him. This is Barry Levitz. Okay. Looks like we actually got a hold of the manager or agent. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, WFMU, you're on the air. I mean, look at that body. I mean, she's totally. I mean, she wants it. WFMU, you're Stila, on the air. Stila, I told you I don't want any calls while I'm down here. WFMU, you're no, what, on the air. What is going on? Sh- Sheila. WFMU, you're on the air. Who is this? Uh, well, is this Barry Levitz? Yes. Who's this? Uh, Barry, my name is Tom Sharpling. I host a radio program in uh, the New Jersey uh, area, New York area. Right. And uh, last week we had a conversation... I need more. Uh, we had a conversation about punk. What the... What is punk? I mean, I know what punk is. It's that outdated music from the 70s. What What does this have to do with... Oh, oh, you're talking about Michael's... Michael's <laughs> dumb idea that he had. Yeah, that's over. Wait, what? It's over. It's done. We finally convinced him that it was a stupid idea. Hold on a minute. I was calling you because we were... You browbeat me into scheduling a... uh, Like an in-studio interview and performance from his... You called me last week and said Michael Jackson... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, I did, I did. You said Michael Jackson... Yep, I had a lot of calls that day. You said he Michael Jackson has a punk band called punk right and he's called mike jackal now yeah that didn't last too long did it (laughs) oh my god yeah i mean we were freaking out that he was actually going to go through with that thank god it didn't happen wait no you you actually though got me to to schedule him coming in here to play live in the studio I have an there's an engineer downstairs who's waiting to engineer this, who came down specifically for this. And and now what? You're telling me that this is not happening? Basically, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Someone should have called you. Uh, there was uh, my my assistant. Uh, you know, I think she should have called you. I'm actually down down here in the Bahamas right now, so I I uh, I kind of signed off on this. Uh, sometime last week but uh yeah sorry about that hey hey hang on yeah give me a margarita all right yeah yeah uh hey hey todd I, more important how did you get this number you gave us this number last week uh it was at the bottom of an email i guess you had it as a uh 
you know, like a uh, a reply to someone else that got forwarded, and we got it. It was as your like your signature or something. Oh, geez, that shouldn't be on there. Well, I know who's getting fired when I get back. Now you, I, I'm not happy right now. I have to admit. I mean, you last week uh-huh. took up a lot of of our time on the radio. Got a lot of people excited. I was just doing my job. Son. That Michael Jackson was going to come down here. Or I should say, Mike Jackal was uh, going to come down here. Please, no. <laughs> Do do me a favor, all right? I'm doing you a favor just by talking to you. You're do, well, do, do not use that name You're doing again. me a favor <laughs> by just talking to me. Look, oh, son. thank God. What Look, a favor. Son. Hey, hey. first of all, don't call me son. Secondly, don't do me any... If you're if these are your favors, don't do me any favors, hey, okay? For starters, you don't yeah. talk to an agent from CAA in that in that tone of voice. If you want to get anywhere in the business, which it looks like you're not getting anywhere as it is if you're on this high school radio station, okay? I'm not on a. This is not a high school radio station. Okay. All right. And you okay? What second? If that's first, what second? Second what? You said firstly, if you're going to do this, what? If, if that's first, if you it's a, you have, must have had more than one point. If you started off with firstly. Well, look. I'm down here. My head's spinning already, all right? You know why? Why? I'm making a big deal. I don't, I don't care gonna, about your I'm big deal. I'm going to fill you in on it. I don't care about your big deal. Well, you, you had the nerve to call up uh, my show and brag to me mm-hmm. about the fact that you are... Uh, the, uh, representing the Prince of Punk, you called oh, him. Oh, yeah, that's... Please never utter that either. I mean, and, and you the also the fact that he wanted to bring back that completely outdated form of uh, I, I won't even call it music, but uh, and you yeah. were also you also had the nerve to tell uh, me that you you were saying I'm more punk than you. Oh, did I say that? Yeah, you, about a hundred times. <laughs> really? Well, that's just me, you know, being being a great agent. You know, I I, I get behind the client. Uh huh. And I just I go all out and I do whatever that client wants me to do. Hey, how is uh, you been listening to a lot of uh, Dead Kennedy? What's that? Oh, <laughs> what what's that? Who's the band that you were saying was one of your favorite bands last week ever? I said that. You said yeah. I you... Well, I, you know I didn't mean it. I mean I'm going I'm going to bat for my client basically. That's what I'm doing. I'm, uh-huh. I'm not into that stuff. I like uh, stuff like Embo. Embo. <laughs> Wait, that, that that's kind of punk though. The embarrassment, Embo. The Embos. What is the embar? I, I'm embarrassed uh, standing here on the beach talking into my cell phone to uh, to a kid. But uh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm not to a me. kid, first of all. That's embarrassing to me. What what, what is I'm, embarrassing? I'm talking about Michael Bolton. Embo. Yeah. Oh, like J Lo Embo. Well, yeah. I mean, I've. <laughs> I've had dinner with him a couple times. He's great. He's a great guy. Uh huh. And that's that's uh. Well, that is more punk than me. I gotta oh, give yeah. you credit. Well, you know, he's he's what we call soft blade over at CAA. Soft what? Soft blade. Soft blade. Smooth, but he's got an edge. He's got an edge. Yeah. My yeah. embo, Michael uh, Bolton. I'll tell you. Uh, now, now is is that your big? What's that? It reminds me a lot of the band that's playing down here at the uh, at the resort. They do uh, they do a lot of his stuff. Oh, geez, they got uh, they really kick it on the Natalie Cole stuff too. Really? Was yeah, re- you got to hear them. You got to hear them. What are they called? Quasar. Quasar. Yeah, yeah. Now is that what you're down? Is that your big signing? You're signing Quasar. Please, please. Okay, are you ready for it? I can't, I can't believe I'm, t- I'm telling a uh, DJ on a high school radio station what uh, I got. This is, first of all, first of all, this is not a high school radio station. Last week the station was fine when you had Mike Jackal coming up here to do a uh, an in studio performance with Punk. Well, what is he doing well, now? Uh, by the way, no. Hey, what what is what is Mike Jackal doing tonight? Well, his name is not Mike Jackal anymore. His name is Michael Jackson, like it always was. And if you need to know, he's in the studio with Q right now. Quincy Jones. You got it. And what are they working on? New stuff. It's great. It's all. It, it, it's like it's like going back to off the wall. It's great. It's going to be great stuff. I mean, I'm I'm dancing just thinking about it. What is that you have on in the background? 
Oh, they got the radio on here at the at the bar, the Tiki Hut here. And what what exactly is that? What exactly is it? Is, is it a bar? No, no. What it, is it, playing? It's, it's where you're so, going. Yeah, I guess. I guess see, it's. See, now I really do think you're a high school student. Jeez. Oh, I, I, sucked I am. Sucked at another one. That's some temper you got there, Barry. Second margarita they've given me tonight, and they all stink. So, how is Toilet Dog, if you don't mind me asking? What is what is Toilet Dog? Oh, that's that's. Oh, oh I remember. I remember Toilet Dog. That that's those losers that that Mike wanted to play. Michael wanted to play with, and we had to cut loose. Yeah, they're gone. Now, did you pay them their uh, their their big money, like you were talking about last week? <laughs> what do you think? No. You're right. And uh And what about the record label that uh that Mike Oh, those two saps from DC. Yeah, Discord Records. Yeah, they uh jeez, that's a good question. I really don't know what what those guys are up to. Uh I know one thing, they don't run a label anymore because uh Michael has the rights to the label, although I I sincerely doubt he will ever do anything with it. <laughs> so they have no label now. So so Michael Jackson in his in his uh Generosity just ended Discord Records. Well, will anyone care? Is, is, is what I'm screaming. Uh, I don't. I, I, I think people will. Look yes. Look at that body. Oh my god. Wow. What was that? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What? I, I didn't mean to interrupt your ogling. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that, but you know, like I said, my main thing is is this uh, this major thing. Now, I should say to anyone who's listening who tuned in to hear the band Punk featuring Michael Jackson or uh, Mike Jackal, as he uh, chose to be called, uh, as I was uh, pretty much browbeaten into calling him. You will not be hearing them tonight because uh, you're, you're lucky, everybody, because it, uh, oh my God, were they bad. I mean, I never thought that, that, that Michael would ever do anything that was could even be considered subpar. But uh -huh. um, this was, yeah, I mean, I'm just glad the tapes of this are, are in the vault. Well, you played a little bit over, of it over the radio last week. Yeah, wasn't that dreadful? I actually thought it was dreadful, but probably for reasons other than you thought it was dreadful. Well, it, it was just bad music. I mean, all that stuff is awful. Yeah, it is all awful, huh? That stuff. Mr. Uh, I'm more punk than you'll ever be. Wait, you're so, more punk? So anyway, we're... You are more punk than I'll ever be. <laughs> no, that's what you were telling me last week. I doubt that. Uh, you you definitely were. Oh, well, but, uh, all right. Now, uh, we are speaking to Barry Levitz from uh, what agency? CAA. Uh-huh. And you... Uh, you, <laughs> oh, excuse me. You are in. T I guess you are in the where the Bahamas. You that's said that's right. That's right. I just signed uh, probably the biggest client of my life, and basically, you're talking to the agent of the biggest star in the world. The biggest star in the you now represent the biggest star in the world. Yep. Really. Yep. Who who is it? Guess. Tom Cruise. Nope. Guess. Um. Cameron Diaz. Nope. Guess. Come on, guy. The biggest star. Will Smith. The biggest star. In the Will world. Smith. No. Keep guessing. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> that guy's practically dead. My. My dad, my dad was his agent. So it's not Clint Eastwood. No, come on, the biggest star in the world. Nicole Kidman. No, come on. Um. Son. Jim on. Jim Carrey. No. All right, you give up. Tom Hanks. No, you got the first name. Well, I said Tom Cruise. He said no to that. No, well, it's neither of those. Come on. Um, it's T. Wilk, dummy. Who is T. Wilk? T. Wilk. What is that? A rap guy oh or something? Oh my god! 
Oh, my God. Are you serious? You don't know who T. Who, who T. Wilk is? Yeah, I really don't know who T. Wilk is. Uh, Tom Wilkinson. Who Who is Tom Wilkinson? Oh, my God. You have a radio show. Yeah. Where you communicate with large numbers of people. Uh-huh. And you don't know who Tom Wilkinson is. Uh, he's only up for an Oscar for his riveting performance in In the Bedroom. Okay. I don't know who he is. Did, did you see Black Knight? No, I didn't. Well, I'm sure you saw him in Jilting Joe. No. Oh, boy. Well, you really don't belong on the radio. Because I don't know the name of... Be the, the biggest movie star in the world. The biggest movie star in the world? Yeah. Tom Wilkinson. Hold on a second. I, I have to now... You have uh, piqued my interest. I am going to look. I'm going. I got to look up a picture of this guy and see if I even recognize him. Oh, he's gorgeous. I mean, I, not that I find him gorgeous, but uh, many of the ladies do find him gorgeous. That's him. I just found a picture of him. He's hot. He's, he's not I mean, hot. He is too. No, he's not. He's the guy from the Patriot. Yeah. And that's the biggest actor in the world? Of course he is. He's up for an Oscar. Yeah, uh, for for In the Bedroom. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Uh, I really have no interest in seeing it. I haven't seen it either. You you haven't seen it either, and now you're representing the guy. Oh, it's a great movie, though. Because? That's just the word on the movie. That's the buzz. That's the buzz on that flick. Does he know you haven't seen the movie? Oh, no. He doesn't need to know that. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like Michael. You know, I I went along with his his, his little uh, punk scapade, and uh, he, he never knew that I, I hated that crap. So you now, uh, you, you have to just get a little perspective on this thing with Tom Wilkinson. This is not the biggest star. Hey, please. It's T. Wilk. T. T. Wilk. T T Wilk, yeah. Oh, we got um, we got big things planned for him too, son. Like what? Like in the bedroom too? Uh, uh, no, uh, he's. Uh, I'm I'm working real hard getting him in the new uh, Star Wars flick. What's that? The 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 the. Well, it couldn't be the the one coming out in. May. Well, you're getting him in the third one. No, the next one. Yeah, the, we got, the one that comes out in May. Yeah, we got a team of writers uh, who, who are coming up with some stuff for him that, uh, that that isn't in the shooting script right now. But uh, once he bags that Oscar, he's in. It's a, <laughs> he's it's not going to bag the Oscar. It's actually an idea of mine. I mean, this is great that I've always fancied myself as a screenwriter, and uh, uh -huh. so it's actually an idea of mine, and we're going with it. Uh, he's going to play uh, Luke Skywalker's cousin, Glorf. Hello? What is the name there? Glorf. Glorf. Luke Skywalker's cousin, Glorf. Yeah, he's a, he's a cross between James Dean and Yoda. Wow. I, boy, I, I, I hope everything works out so you can get him in the movie. Uh, I, I guess it comes out in, in three months, so I, I, can't, I can't see how they wouldn't be able to add a whole new character. Oh, we can shoot his stuff in a day or so. It's going to be great. Tom Wilkinson. Tom, you know, uh, I'm also talking with the brass over there at Paramount. We're going to try to uh, get them to green light this uh, other idea that I've got. It's this, uh, this script I've been working on for, for a, a few months. Uh, uh -huh. it's, called, it's called Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones, yeah, which is the name of the Star Wars movie. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess we'll have to call it something else. Yeah, I guess so. Well, anyway, well, that kind of shoots down a, a lot of the idea that I had. Uh huh. But uh, I do know that I want I want uh, Tom and Meryl Streep in on this, and I, I think that I, I think that they will really get some sparks going. Wow! Wow! I, I look forward to seeing those sparks. Yeah, they're going to have great chemistry. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they will. I mean, that's that's just a lock if you have if you have a a, a Tom Wilkinson lighting up the screen. Now you know. There's no chance in, uh, in hell that he's going to win. Oh, he uh, certainly the will. Oscar. Otherwise, you know, I believe in him. He be he believes in uh, he believes in himself, and together we believe in each other. Well, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, 
the entire academy does not believe in him. And you know this because you work for free at a ra- high school radio station in Philadelphia. It's a an independent radio station in uh, New Jersey and New York. Well, I live in Hollywood, and I am basically in the movie business. Really? Yes. What What is your biggest claim to fame, then, uh, Barry Levitz? Besides this, and besides working with Michael, uh, probably... Oh, geez, probably the last uh, thing I did with Cher, which was her uh, her Believe uh, tour. You worked on the Believe yes. tour? Yes. Wow, wow. So that that really just gives you the uh, the credibility to uh, to navigate through the punk uh, arena that you, you were... Please, please don't bring up that word, okay? I mean, it's just nauseating to me, all those ugh, just gross people. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, when uh, where where will you be when Tom Wilkinson doesn't win the Oscar? Well, son, you're getting on my wrong side, and that is not a good thing to do. Okay. Why is that? Because. What are you going to have me crushed? <laughs> it's funny. I was about to use the word crush. Yes, and uh, if you have any aspirations to make it in the entertainment field at all, which mm-hmm. I, I doubt you do, because I. Your uh, your style is completely amateur, if if I could use such a word. If you could, yeah. yeah. Uh, Although so, it might be a little tricky because it's uh, you got a whole three syllables there. Okay. Hey, look, son. Okay. Yeah. I feel bad that you uh, feel like you got the short end of the stick on this thing. Well, okay? I don't feel like I did. I did. Well, well, look. I I feel bad that you. So you feel bad because Michael ditched that punk crap. I want you to apologize to my audience. Well, look, uh, short of that, here, here, here's what I got, all right? Yeah. How about a little peace offering? Okay. Okay. Is that all right? Well, uh, I'm listening. Okay, well, I'm going to call the label uh-huh. and have them send over to you and your station one of those mobile fidelity copies of the Bad Album. Is that all right? Now, now this is supposed to do what? That's the, what do you mean supposed to do what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. What, what exactly are you doing out of the goodness of your heart? I'm getting you this. Basically, it, it, it's a gold-plated CD for your for your dumb station. If you don't want it, just forget it. All right. Wow, you're getting. Hey, does Tom Wilkinson know you have this kind of temper? Hey, you keep him out of this, okay? <coughs> All right. What are you going to do? Uh, are you going to flip out like this at him when he uh, loses that? I don't flip out in front of my clients, okay? When he doesn't get the Oscar. Ask Mary Hart. Uh, uh, Mary Hart, if, if you flip out in front of your clients? Excuse me? Ask her if you flip out in yeah, front of your clients. I don't. I say that for private, and I say that for jerks like you and this dumb waiter who can't give me a great margarita. Now, Tom Wilkinson, when uh, when you when you uh, inevitably melt down in front of him, which it seems like is a uh, pretty much a, a, a lead pipe cinch that is going to happen uh, sooner than later, if this is the. Uh, the, the the way you conduct your day to day life. You're working me. Uh, I'm what? You're working me. Working you. Yeah. How am I working you? Uh, you are pushing my buttons, and I think you know that. And what I'm going to push up your bottom is a gold plated CD, if you keep it up, okay? Oh, really? Now look. No, no, you look. Uh huh. Okay. Hey, that gold plated CD. Yeah. You know you you might you know who you might want to give that to Tom Wilkinson. Uh, because it's probably going to be the only gold-plated anything that he's going to get in the year 2002. Yeah, I'll give it to him. He'll put it right up next next to Oscar, okay? Yeah. Who, okay, son? Who's Oscar? Oh. Who, who, what is he going to borrow uh, Russell Crowe's Oscar <laughs> okay, for A Beautiful okay. Mind? Okay, okay, son. Here's what I'll do for you, okay? 
Okay. If, if you stop being a complete tool right now. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Look, Mary Hart, one of my clients, one of my great clients, mm -hmm. is going to be doing a, an incredible pre-Oscar show for E.T. Okay. She, she's talking to everybody, okay? All right. Here's what you get. Okay, what's that? If I can swing it, which I probably can. Uh-huh. I'll get you a three-minute interview with her the day it airs. Sounds oh. great, doesn't it? <laughs> if you will keep this, this whole emotional explosion thing that I've got under wraps. The fact that you've got a complete, you're completely out of control. I am not out of control. The, the fact that you pretty much are as unhinged as they come. How did you know my nickname in high school? You're you're completely transparent, and uh, you you you, uh, you you you're yelling at me. That's how I know. I don't yell. I persuade harshly. Harshly, yeah. yeah. Oh, that so that's what you call it. Hey, do you even know where your your client Tom Wilkinson uh, was born? Why would I even care about that? He, I, uh, he's American. Well, he's British, actually. Oh, well, he fooled me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. You didn't notice that uh, pesky British accent. He never uses it around me. You know, he's... i got to say, I've actually never talked to him. Uh-huh. Yeah. So are you going to, uh, will you spend Oscar night with him? Oh, my God, yes. He's my boy. He's your, he's your boy, and yeah. you've never met him. Oh. You don't have to meet your client. Mm -hmm. See, son, you have a lot, have a long way to go mm -hmm. to, just to understand uh, the entertainment business. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, so, I don't. So study hard in high school. Uh -huh. Okay, and yeah. um, try your best. I seriously doubt you will get anywhere. Uh, I, they're always looking for garbage men. Okay, and yeah, yeah. So just be, you know, be content. Be content with not much because that's exactly what you're going to be getting. I got a boogie. Hey, well, let me they have the mambo line. One going. second, I want you as a final gesture of uh, of, of uh, this whole thing to apologize to my audience for the fact that Mike Jackal and Punk will not be performing tonight. All right, well, put me on the air. You're, well, you put, put you on. You've been on the air. You're kidding. I'm not you, kidding. You can't put me on the air without my permission. I said you're on the air. Oh, well, I said you are sued. Oh, I'm yeah. sued now. The station uh, is shut down. I'm sure someone will be getting in, in touch with your principal tomorrow. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was worth it to you. Well, I, I hope, uh, the conversely, that your career uh, dries up tomorrow uh, when everyone hears uh, that, that you're such a, a hothead. I hope that Tom Wilkinson drops you like a bad habit. Tommy loves me. Tommy? Yeah. Uh-huh. Can you name... I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Was Tom Wilkinson in the movie The Full Monty? Of course he was. He played uh, Ronnie, I think it was. Uh, I think it was... Uh, he, yes, he was in it, but he didn't play Ronnie. Was he in the movie... Groundhog's Day. Of course he was. He played, uh, I think his name was Todd. He was not in the movie Groundhog's Day. Of course he was. I'm sure he was. Well, you're completely wrong. Okay. Well, I'm looking at his uh, filmography. Are you, are you done? Not yet. I think you are done. I'm done. I think you're done in, in Hollywood. I think you're absolutely wrong, and I will... How about I talk to you in six months, and we will see who's where. Uh, I imagine you will have graduated high school by then. Maybe, maybe. Uh huh. Or you'll, or you'll be in summer school. Okay, and I imagine at that point you and Tom Wilkinson uh, will know each other a little less than you do now. I doubt that because I think by that point I will not only have written his next hit movie, I will have directed it. Okay, and by that point I will not even be speaking with you. Well, you know what? I don't want to talk to you. Fine. Apologize to the audience, and all this will be over. 
hey, everybody out there, all, all you uh, high school kids, geez, I hope you can forgive me that uh, for the fact that the greatest singer in the history of recorded music mm -hmm. did not come on your show and play music that is so far beneath him and embarrass himself. Well, thank you. I hope you can forgive me. Uh, that's not much of an apology. Well, but, you that's know. what you get. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I don't accept that apology. Oh, no. You don't accept it? Oh, no. Yeah, I don't accept it. Oh, jeepers. Jeepers. I guess I'll just have to go off and, and get laid and not ever think about this again. All right, later on. Oh. You are listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. This is the best show on WFMU, and uh, while that apology was as insincere as they come, I apologize to everybody who was looking forward to hearing Mike Jackal, a.k.a. Michael Jackson's band Punk, tonight on the radio. I apologize for the fact that it, it did not happen. And that I was hoodwinked a second time. First by Perry Farrell. Second by Michael Jackson. The phone number 201-200-9368. It is Open Phone Tuesday. Let me go back to the auction here. And see, look at this, the uh, the Segway going up, $42,100. That's a little bump uh, of $2,100 since the last time we checked in. And the, with, with 36 days to go in the auction. And uh, the high bidder now is Akira 246. Well, what a shocker that, that somebody with an email address that says Akira would bid on one of the first three human transportation units available. I hope when I see someone on one of these Segway... Uh, human transporters riding down the street. I hope everyone laughs at them. Just laugh. When you see somebody on one of them, don't ask them questions about it, how much it costs them, how cool it is, is it fun. Just laugh at them. And ask them, you know, if you see them on one of these, somebody riding through the streets of New York or New Jersey, ask them what happened to their lawnmower blades. Because the thing, it basically looks like a lawnmower without the blades. And that's right. Dean Kamen, Amazon.com, and Akira246 all get the thumbs down from this program. Two zero one two hundred nine three six eight is the number. It is Open Phone Tuesday. For another 55 minutes left in the program. The email address, tomss at wfmu.org. If you uh, want to write an email, I'm looking at the screen. This second, the second you write it, I see it. Let's check the email. Let's see what people have to say. Uh, okay. Gord checking in from Canada. 
He says, I want my sickles and hammers. Well, Gord, I have to say to you, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen tonight. Michael Jackson left you high and dry just like he left me high and dry. Let's hear some music. Something from Let's Audio on WFMU. Coming up, it goes a little something like this.
everybody. Welcome back to the best show on WFMU. My name is Tom Sharpling. Here with you for another 40 minutes. Hey, Dave. Are you, uh... Are you sad that Punk is not showing up? Well, yeah. Because we're, we're here in the studio. We're uh -huh. set up for a band. Uh-huh. Wasn't that horrible? What do you think of that guy, Barry Levitt? Thumbs down. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We just heard from Neil Michael Haggerty from the album. Neil Michael Haggerty plays that good old rock and roll. We heard Louisa, Louisa LeRae. Before that, Clinic from their hot, hot, hot new album, Walking With Thee. Welcome. And starting us off, Let's Audio. Let's Audio consists of... Abby from Ms. Pac-Man, and Rodney from Harmonica Dog. And we heard Time Slave from their four-song EP, Let's Audio, and that's Let's Audio with an exclamation point, I believe. Yes? Is there? No, there's not. There's an exclamation point. The, the record is called Now with an exclamation point. The phone number, 201-200-9368. Open phone Tuesday for another 43 minutes. 201-200-WFMU. The email address, Tom S at WFMU.org, and if you want to join Friends of Tom, FOT, F-O-T, the fan club that gets you a membership card, amongst other things. Tom S. at WFMU.org. That's all it takes. Tom S. at WFMU.org. We check back in with the Segway auction. $42,100 with 108 bids. I want to see what the email names for the other people are. DFO, D-F-O-W, is the uh, high bidder on the $36,600 segue. And the $37,100 segue, I shan't give your email address out, sir. But right now, I am going to bid <laughs> on Segway. Fifty fifty thousand five hundred, Enter your email address, thomas at wfmu.org. I do not have an Amazon.com password, so let's continue. Enter your first name. Hot Rockin' Ronnie Fuqua. Create a password. Okay, here we go. $50,500. Bid. The bid is in. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Tom? Yes. This is Trish in North Carolina. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm at the bar. You're at the bar. 
Yeah. How's the bar? It's good. I'm the first time I'm listening live on the air, so I thought I would call and say hi. Oh, well, that's all. That's very nice of you. Yeah. I've been listening to the archives every day when I come to work. Really? You listen, you play, you play, now you are the owner of a bar. It's true. In North Carolina. In Chapel, well, in Carborough. In Carborough, North Carolina. Yes. And Carborough is? Next to Chapel Hill. It's next to Chapel Hill. People don't know about it, but it. If you drove through, it would be the same place, I bet. But. Okay. Now, you are the owner of a bar called? <laughs> Orange County Social Club. Named after the movie, of course. Of course. Were but you excited? Not really. Do you have pictures from the movie up in the bar? No, I haven't seen the movie. Have you seen the movie? No. I haven't either. But do you have things from, like, the poster, and then, like, you wrote underneath it, Social Club? No. We opened them before the movie came out. But you could still do that. Maybe. Now, when you get to the bar, you play archives at the bar? Yeah, I've been playing. I come in in the morning and have my coffee, and I've been checking out the best show archives. And I've 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 been tempted to call during listening to the archives, which uh -huh. I obviously can't do. You I mean, can, but you're going to get another DJ. Right, exactly. Now, now who, what is, you can now tell me at the bar. Mm-hmm. Who was your who was like your most unpleasant customer? Oh my god, that's so easy. I can't say the name. Well, don't say the name, but describe them. They drink a lot of beer and never tip me or any of my bartenders. Well, you don't have to tip the owner though. Right. Everyone knows that. So that's why I said or any or of any my of bartenders. bartenders. Mm -hmm. But I have a theory about that whole tipping the owner thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's kind of out of date as far as not to tip the owner. Well, I guess I'm kind of biased. Now, did you can that you did? Do you come up with this opinion when you <laughs> became the owner of a bar? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I'm you know, this is how I'm making my money. Of course, bartending, not mm -hmm. owning a bar. Is there a single worst customer though? Yeah, he's really the one right now. And how fun. old? Describe this person. As far as what they look like or yes. what they do. Describe either any way you want to describe them. Um, he's a man. Okay. In his late 30s. Okay. And he comes in. We're open from 4 to 2 every day. Uh-huh. He probably comes in around 4 or 4.30. Okay. And he, uh, drinks a lot of PBR, which is the cheapest beer we have. Okay. And, you know, doesn't ever tip anyone. Maybe a quarter here and there. A quarter. Yeah. Like he tonight, tonight he came in and drank seven beers and and didn't give me one nickel. Okay. And you know gets phone messages and. So you're accommodating at him at the yeah, bar. Yeah. Yeah. See that's and it's the not trade. Like he doesn't know the bar life or the bar uh -huh. scene or that you're supposed to tip a bartender. Is this person in a band? Mm -mm. Well. I can't. I can't. I don't. I don't feel comfortable going too far into detail. Okay. Well, you. But no, he's not. No, no. Band people, they're good tippers. Mm-hmm. In my, in my uh, experience. What is the drunkest you've ever seen anybody at your bar? Oh. Has any? Would you ever have to clean up the? Uh, oh my God! All the time. All the time. Yeah. The hork. Yeah. Yep. Now has anybody? And it's this hard is... for me to make the. You know, it's all my pals working here, so hard for me to make my the people that work here do it so. yeah so you have to do it falls to the owner yeah now you know what uh i like to do when i go to bars right i go in the, up in the urinal no i go oh. in the men's room right right and i take uh the toilet paper right yeah and i take the the rolls of it as many rolls as are mm -hmm. in the and i jam them into the toilet yeah and then i flush it eight times <laughs> i know and then I just let it, and then I... I didn't think you had been here, but evidently you have. I have. <laughs> I do that at every every place I eat. I, every restaurant, every bar, every movie theater. Not only was there every rest paper stop paper in the toilet yesterday, uh -huh. there Keep was it, a letter. Nothing. A letter? Yeah. Not to you. Maybe it was to me, but I couldn't read it. You couldn't read it? Did you try to read it? <laughs> no. You didn't read You You tried a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, I could tell that it was a letter, but I couldn't really read. Uh, you know, you don't want to stick your head too far into the toilet. No, you don't. there. But 
Yeah, a letter. It wasn't ripped up or anything. It was just in there. You know, somebody could have acted like all mad and ripped it up and thrown it in the exactly. toilet. Exactly. But they actually just put it in in one piece yeah. into the toilet. Mm -hmm. Now, do you are you considering putting up one of those signs that says... Man, every time I have to do things in that room, which I'm sorry to say, it's just the men's room. Mm -hmm. um, I think about a sign. But you know you know what would be funny is if you came in and the sign was in the in toilet. In the toilet, right. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's, what, that's why I'm not putting a sign up. And then I would put a sign where the sign was that said, <laughs> that's what you get for telling us what to do. When when they per when the first person graffiti my bar's really new uh huh so when the first person graffiti uh, like really nasty nasty words uh huh on the, not good words no um were you I just did write a note to that person uh, did you know who they were no or you just don't. you wrote that a note is Uncle Jorge you wrote a note next to the graffiti yeah. Were you just shocked the first time? It was like it would be like somebody putting graffiti up in your house. Well, this is like my house. I'm it not, is. That's yeah, exactly more it. Than I'm at my house. Yeah. So the first time you saw it, it was like one of your friends or somebody. They're like, "How could someone come into my house and gra put graffiti up?" Yeah, Uncle Jorge. Uncle Jorge. I mean, that's what he said his name was. I would. Graffiti. You know what? I would think that that is a uh, a nom de plume. <laughs> it might be. It might be. I've asked around if anyone knows. I mean, we don't think that the person's name is actually Jorge. Now, what if you actually heard someone talking about their uncle Jorge? <laughs> Would you actually, like, invent... If they, you were, like, at a restaurant and you heard someone saying, Oh, my uncle Jorge is the greatest guy. Yeah, I would totally go over He that. works at Staples, and he gets <laughs> these markers. <laughs> now, would you just... You would literally investigate it, then. You would ask about... Yeah, I would totally go up to their table and ask And them. find out. Mm-hmm. You're into it. Well, I mean, he said some horrible things about m children that I don't really have. So he wrote the graffiti about you. Well, I took it personally. You took it per <laughs> But was it directed towards employees of the bar? No, it just had to do, you know, it was a your kind of thing. <laughs> I will do something okay. to your. So you, you personalized that. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. Well. <laughs> Let it go. Realize you you own a bar now. I know. And everything that goes with it. That's what goes with it. There's a lot of good things though. Like the like the nine thousand percent markup. It's I'm not in New York. I'm in North Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry, the you know, seventy five hundred percent markup. <laughs> it's not. I mean what does a beer cost you? Four cents? No. Like the on tap beer costs forty cents. Forty cents. And right. then you charge like eleven dollars for a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. Yeah. So I gotta pay people. I gotta pay rent. Yeah, I pay a dollar fifty. That's hard to believe. Now, do you make like do you sell like grilled cheese sandwiches? No, there I don't and things sell like that? any food, and I don't have any rock. That's that's rock. You mean wouldn't you, rock? You mean like drugs? No, like I don't. I don't have any live music. Just oh, you don't have any rock. I thought you said, yeah. I don't sell food and I don't sell rock. <laughs> I don't sell crack. That's what I was thinking. Like, you're just, like, moving crack out of the back room <laughs> no. or something. No, I just I don't have any food or any live music. Are you thinking about adding food? No. Or are you thinking about adding live music? No. Neither. Okay. Just the bar. Well, I appreciate your insight into the... So far tonight, we've yeah. heard... We've gotten a look into the world of a policeman... Yeah, I, I I just I just got off work at nine and started listening when he was just about done with his phone call. So we got I'll a, have to go back and listen to it. See, on the yeah. well, we got a look inside the world of Canadian. Yeah, I got that one. We talked to a manager of uh, of Michael Jackson or agent or whatever it was. Heard him. Heard, well, you know that's why I tuned in. Uh huh. Initially, because I thought I would hear punk. But yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I and mean, then I even he, talked to a few people about it and told them to listen in. People were excited. I know. I, know. I apologize. But now we got everyone got an insight into the mind of a barkeep. It's true. Well, thank you for yeah. calling. Yeah, thank you. And uh, keep listening. I will. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. WFMU, you're on the air. Yes. I believe somebody paged me from this number. Uh, no. Are, are you sure you don't?
didn't page me. Uh, I'm positive I didn't page you. Hmm. Who is this? This is the party doctor. No. I'm on call, tw- I'm on call 24-7. No, there was no page from, from uh, here. You're a party doctor? I'm the party doctor. You're the party doctor? Yes. And what does being the party doctor entail? Uh, well, my wardrobe, 24-7, scrubs, surgical mask, and sunglasses. And... Uh-huh. I constantly have my medical kit with me in case I have to make a house call. And what what would be in the party doctor's medical kit? Rubber chicken, confetti, mm-hmm. bottle of champagne, videotaped copy of the Fat Boys Vehicle Disorderlies. Okay. And Spyro Gyro's Greatest Hits. Spyro Gyro's Greatest Hits. That That's party doctor? That... What, what for who calls the party doctor? People who have had a bad day. And what do you Or do? in case they need they might need a party spiced up. So if I'm throwing a party that's not going particularly well, you can page me. Then things will change for you. You show up at the party how quickly? Depends on where you're located. But just you leave right away though. Yes. I'm on call 24/7. You're on call like an actual doctor. So you show up at the party, and what the what if if my party's tanking, and I paid you? Yes. You show up and do what? Read loud from a Louis Grizzard book. Okay, and that that gets people going. Usually, yes. Is, or is that the first thing you do? Or I prescribe repeated viewings of Young Doctors in Love. The movie. Uh, yes. Like the parody uh, thing. You prescribe that. Yes. And, and repeated viewings. Repeated. Or, or repeated viewings of Stitches with Eddie Albert. So is everything... And Parker Stevenson. And Parker, okay. Everything you, pres- <laughs> everything you prescribe is doctor-related? Is that... Well, I, I, like to, I, I like to give credit to the party doctors of previous generations. Oh, so it's like a respect thing. Yes. So you give respect to the... The party doctors of of your okay. My my idol of which is was a key, Prince's keyboard player from the early eighties. Yes, the guy who was on, yeah, like the guy from like nineteen ninety nine, right? Who yes. would be on stage with Prince in full doctor scrubs? That's correct. So that's your inspiration. Is that that's what led you into this business? Yes, it is. But the funny thing is, I have no idea what his name is. I don't either. That's but funny. I'm full of I'm full of funny business. Okay, so now uh, you sound like you've had a bad day. I actually have had a bad day. You yeah. need me to You need me to come by. Uh, well, we're in Jersey City. How long would it take for you to get here? Ooh, probably about four and a half hours. But I can be on a plane in thirty minutes. <laughs> a plane? Why are you? Where are you calling from? I'm uh, calling from Chicago. Yeah, see, that's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I have my own jet. You actually, <laughs> is that that's from your party doctor business? Yes. That's how is this a, is this a lucrative thing? I guess that's the next obvious question here. Is this is this lucrative? Yes. Like, how much do you charge if I needed you here to liven up uh, my night? Six thousand dollars. <laughs> Six thousand bucks to show up and read from a Louis Grizzard uh, book. That's correct. And 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 then do what else? We would wa- we would watch my videotape collection of After Mash. You have episodes of After Mash. I have okay. every. I have all thirteen episodes of After Mash. Okay, so we would watch that. Yes. And perhaps a little Trapper John. Okay. And, and that's and I'm paying six grand for that. Yes. And what? We'll have we... a little. Have a little champagne. Okay. Is it good champagne at least? Sure. Depends sure. on what. It depends on. It's as good as you want to pay for. Okay. And and what? Uh... And I'll, uh, I'll I'll liven things up with the rubber chicken. 
Uh huh. How, what do you do with the rubber chicken that lives? Uh, little ventriloquism. With a rubber chicken. Yes. Uh, how? <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, how exactly do you do uh, ventriloquism with a rubber chicken? You can do ventriloquism with anything. Yeah, but you can't make its mouth really move, can you? Like... I can make its body jerk around while my arm is inside of it. Oh, okay. So you kind of make it dance it is around. A huge hit. For the party doctor. That's so. That's like what that is. That one of your your uh, your top gimmicks. Uh, yes, it is. So, how long have you been doing this party doctor business? Oh, about six years. And you you've done Ever pretty since the first time I saw disorderlies. And that just got you hooked. Yes. Disorderlies. Yes. And from that point on, you were just. Uh... Also, if you'll know, there are you know. The party doctor has been a reoccurring character in a slew of 80s teen sex comedies. Like, can you name one? I believe there was a party doctor in Up the Creek. Really? I think so. There was, of course, a party doctor in both of the Cannonball Runs, Mr. Jack Elam. That's correct. I'm fully aware of that. So, th so that that served as your initial inspiration. Party doctors from movies, and and the guy from Prince's band, who wasn't particularly funny, but he kept, I get, the, pa he kept the party going. He was more of a partier, right? That was not necessarily a funny partier. Well, I'm not necessarily. I'm not. A, I didn't say that I was a comedian. Yeah, but you'd think that was fun. I get the party going. Mm hmm. So you get the party going. But it yes. seems like you're not adverse to uh, having some laughs. Oh, no, certainly not. What's a party without laughs, says the party doctor. Says the party doctor. Yes. Now, do you... Uh, what Are there other truisms of being a party doctor that I'm not... Uh... I don't sleep. You don't sleep? No. On call 24-7. I have to be able to jump up just like a fireman, uh -huh. just like a police officer, and get to where... The parties are waning. Okay. And, like, who, wh what are some of the calls you, what is, like, an average? I, I often, I often uh, am found in hospitals posing as a real doctor to cause, to cause hijinks. And who's hiring you to do that? I do that on my own for practice. Oh, so that just keeps that's you, how, that's that how just I, keeps you, okay. That's how I get my act together. Okay. I run around a uh, hospital. And uh, you, you know, come fr up. frisk frisk the uh, shapely nurses. And do people think you're a doctor? Oh, of course, yes. Just because you're in scrubs and stuff, right? I mean, have Surgical you? Surgical mask. I and, mean, uh, that, I, I'm a, always I'm always in the sunglasses. Oh well, that kind of maybe gives it away that you're not an actual doctor, though. You'd, you'd think be, you'd be you'd be amazed that people just think you're a doctor, kind of fooling around. I guess yes, certainly. I mean, I believe I, I believe I may have saved some lives through your partying. Through yes, really good time. Good time save lives. I have that tattooed. Where I have a I have a back piece that says "Good time save lives." A back piece. What's that? That's like that's across my uh, the, my entire upper back. Really, shoulder, you, shoulder it, to shoulder. Good time save lives. Yes, and that that came about as your that's party the doc party doctor theme. That's my credo. Now, are there other people who work for you? I mean, or is it just you? No, I work solo. But you wouldn't I consider bet. franchising out the... Uh... Uh, possibly, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, they, they broke the mold. With you? When, uh, yes. Now, as you get older, I guess you have to realize I that I will you... have to, yes, I will have to hand it down to an apprentice. Would, hey. would, you, would, you, would, you, uh, would you be interested? In what? In, in, bec in becoming my apprentice. Would I have to move to Chicago? No, absolutely not. I, I, I could have satellite party doctors all over the country. See, that's what I was thinking. That way they could get to the parties faster. Yeah, excellent idea. It would be like if there was only one Domino's that actually, like, if people wanted pizza, then it took five right. hours for the pizza to get there. Or right. if you had one in every town. Right. You're, yeah, I, I, might be, I, I might vaguely be interested in this. Well, is this something we could maybe pursue? I mean, yes, I, I, yes, off, uh, 
I, uh, I, you know, at other times, uh huh, we could talk. Okay. I guess. Now what? Because I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, w- I would probably try to bring my own. Well, yeah. What would uh, what would you uh, flavor talk? to it? Yeah. Here's, why don't we go through a little litmus test? Okay. Why don't uh, Why don't you tell me how you would liven up a party? And I, the party doctor, the master, uh-huh. the judge. You well, can uh, judge. Okay. I'll grade you. Uh huh. So, so, so we're saying the premise is that there's a party that's flopping. Right. I guess quiet. That, a quiet party. What long, sp- long spaces in between conversation. Is it a? Is it a? Is it like a like a formal party or a? Uh, no, it's it's more of a. Let's just say I'll keep it easy since this is your first time. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's a casual gathering of uh, around twenty to twenty-five individuals. Okay. Uh, everybody's uh, maybe slightly uncomfortable, not talking. Maybe they don't know each other very well. Nobody, uh, nobody at the party has taken the reins and become the master of ceremonies. So they're just they're just kind of sitting around. Perhaps they're uh, you know segregated into def- different rooms. Okay. Well, what I do you do? Start now. I would. I guess, wow, I guess I would show up at the party and uh, I guess try to get everybody in the same room to start with. Very good. Then we, you know, then we could get some energy going. I'd probably change the music, something, something lively. Yeah. What would you play? Like some dance music, maybe. Okay. Now, would that be techno? Or no. would it be okay. maybe? What if I was playing like stuff from like the uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack? Uh, perhaps there are some parties where that would apply, sure. Okay. We we, yes, I, I would never rule that out. No. Okay, okay. And uh, so then I would... Uh, what if I tried to get everyone doing the hustle at the same time? Loosen everybody well, up. That might work, sure. Now, you have to, you have to, you have to uh, keep in mind whatever the, the gender breakup of the party is. Okay. Under makeup, rather. Uh huh. So then, I. Uh, what so if they're I? They're all doing. They're all doing the hustle. So I got everybody doing the hustle, and uh, I would assume that there's going to be some sticklers who don't want to join in on the fun. Probably so. So there will actually uh, there will be a, a small pocket of people who are probably laughing at you. Uh huh. Well, I guess I would try not to let that get to me. That's good. And I try to engage them, maybe? Uh, sure. Engage them in what? A fist fight? No, no, not a fist fight. Just try to get them into the being a little silly at the party. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe like... What are your, uh, what are your tools to, to this evening? What well, tools would you bring to the party? What uh, props would you bring? Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Okay. Um... I guess I'd bring maybe. What if I brought like a oversized like twister mat? Okay, okay. And laid that down to try to get uh, everybody playing like twister or something. Okay, not bad, not bad. And uh, maybe champagne. Sure, alcohol never hurts. Okay. Although you have to keep in mind that there are usually, usually already is alcohol at a party. Okay, so maybe I <laughs> would bring, balloons. What about like balloons or something like that? Or is that, uh, is that well, you can bring balloons, but I'll tell you this: a certain type of balloon works a little bit better. What kind of balloon? A water balloon. So an actual water balloon. That, that am I am I throwing it at people? You might want to hit the sticklers with the water balloon. Really? Be careful on uh, damaging any uh, anything that might be perishable. Okay. Or damageable by water. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Any? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're kind of. That's that's kind of. I think I, you've done okay. C minus. C minus. That's not bad. C minus is not bad. No, not for your first time. Certainly not. I would kind of be interested in exploring this. Okay. Well. I mean, it, I'll it, call you back. I'll get some uh, papers together. Uh huh. And uh, I will uh, perhaps mail you an application. Maybe I can give you the application. You know, we can do a verb. We can do a verbal application and a written application. Mm-hmm. And we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. We all right. Well, I guess uh, this is the party doctor signing out. Well, thank you, party doctor. I appreciate it. It's very interesting.
That's no problem. I'm always here to help. Well, great. Well, thanks for okay. calling. Are you don't, uh, don't, feel free to call again. I, I actually didn't call you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. I, I really did not call him. 201-200-9368 is the number. This is the best show on WFMU. Ten minutes left in the show, and then we turn it over to uh, Nickel and Dime Radio, hosted tonight by uh, Michael Shelley will be in studio, filling in for small change. The email address, Tom S. At WFMU.org. If you want to join the Friends of Tom, just email Tom S. at WFMU.org and say, I want to be a friend of Tom. And we'll get you out a membership card right away. Zip, zip, zip. Boom, in the mail like that. So quickly, it'll, it'll frighten you. Put him through. What? Oh, sorry. He mentioned the Grateful Dead. Yeah. What, did he want to hear the Grateful Dead? Yes, he did. Okay, a, a, a caller wanted to hear the Grateful Dead. What, what did he want to hear by them? Just, and I, he didn't specify. Okay. He, he wanted to know if you played the Grateful Dead, and if you did, if you'd play something. But when I told him no Grateful Dead, then I guess... He just failed out. He lost, okay. All right. Well, I'm looking out for you. I know you are. Those Grateful Dead songs are like 15 minutes long. I know they are. Okay. Sometimes this show is, uh, you know, it feels like one great... It doesn't feel like a Grateful Dead concert sometimes. Like we've got the, uh, the part where it's like the clearing of your throat, which is them doing their thing. You think you didn't know the show started already. But it did. Then you get into a couple songs. Then you do a little noodling. You bring it back in. And then you end with, uh, the, give me some loving. Or whatever the Grateful Dead end with. Two zero one two hundred nine three six eight. Let's go back to the email and see what uh, everybody wants. We got Jason checking in, and he says, What did Jason Williams do? I'm on vacation, and I've been away from the news. And whatever the story is, it's not on any of the big Internet news outlets. Well, Jason Williams was at his compound in New Jersey, his big mansion, and a limo driver was shot was shot dead. And the scariest part of the story is that Jason Williams was hanging out with the Harlem Globetrotters when it happened. They were visiting his house. And now they're saying that the, that Jason Williams was uh, because he's a big skeet shooter. He has like a skeet shooting range on his uh, property. They're saying that he was uh, trying to show people that he could twirl a rifle like Chuck Connors, like the rifleman, and that it went off and hit this guy in the chest. That's what happened to Jason Williams, allegedly. We got Annie checking in. She says, I was so looking forward to Mike Jackal doing his thing. This is so disappointment, so disappointing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, as the uh the people from Canada say. Oh, it's a sad world. 
You know what we're going to do now? We're going to play one final record, and then it will be time for Nickel and Dime Radio. Tonight, hosted by Michael Shelley. So I slide the mic over here. We slide over to the old CD player. And we are going to hear something from the band Gasoline. A song called Merry Go Round. From their hot album, Take It to the People. As promised, here are Merry Go Round. <laughs> here are Gasoline with Merry Go Round. Okay, that was uh, Gasoline with Merry Go Round. From their album, Take It to the People, and you are listening to WFMU, East Orange WXHD, Mount Hope, worldwide, on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. Stay tuned for Michael Shelley filling in for Small Change, and we will be back next Tuesday and the email address, Tom S. At WFMU do, uh, dot O-R-G.